Welcome. We are here at the Mall of America doing our coaches, uh, our, our coaches workshop. And so we are going to be doing a segment on the engineering notebook designed and building the robot. I'm Paula Mortensen, uh, Southland Robotics in Southern Minnesota. And we've got Katie Frank, VEX Minnesota coordinator. And so we're excited to go over some of the engineering notebook portion of your team. And so the first thing that uh, we want to talk to you about is why do we do an engineering notebook? Really, the purpose of the engineering notebook is to cover industry standards. Many of these team members are going to go into STEAM fields, and it's a really good idea that they've been exposed to an engineering notebook. And there are kind of two different formatting. I know old school was all hard copy, ink, you're writing down in a, a bound notebook type thing. And now as, as the world has become more digitized, there is a little bit of a shift more into the digital world. And so there are some digital templates that we are going to bring in front of you today to show you. But it is important for you to know when you go to a tournament, if they are going to collect a hard copy of your engineering notebook, which could either consist of the bound notebook your team has written in the entire season, or if you've had a digital copy or created, your teams have created digital notebooks, they certainly may um, print those off and put them in a three ring binder and turn those in. It could also be the reverse where a tournament wants them to be digital or digitized notebooks. And if you've already done a digital notebook, that means that you're just going to send a link to that notebook and so that the judges can go ahead and peruse that possibly ahead of your tournament. Another option is if your team has done a digital notebook, every time that they have done uh, and annotated or written in their engineering notebook, if you teach them to scan that and keep that working document growing throughout the season, because oftentimes going into maybe a regional state tournament or for sure worlds, they are required to have a digital notebook. And sometimes when you get to an end of a season and you've got 400 pages and you've got multiple teams, starting to scan that is, is quite a task. And so just teaching these teams along the way to go ahead and do that. And so, Katie? I do want to add, though, if we want to put my computer screen up on the board. Okay. So, if you go to roboteventscom you go to your competitions, and then select VEX Robotics Competition. I'm just going to click on the first one, Mall of America Signature Event here. You scroll down on the left side of the screen, you will see a judging format. And you can see for this particular event, this is an all-in-person judging. And that means both the team interviews and the engineering notebooks will be judged in person. Teams should bring a physical copy of their notebook to submit to the judges. Um, before you go to an event, you'll want to make sure you're checking this tab on the event page to determine if you will be uh, turning in either a hard copy notebook or a digital notebook prior to that event. And those engineering notebooks, along with us trying to teach industry standards and helping these students understand that whole process, because engineering notebooks are used oftentimes for patents. And so having that information and having them uh, learn how to do that is really important. But there are three awards at a tournament that could potentially be awarded. The first two awards, the Excellence and Design Awards, both are, are heavily weighted on the engineering notebook and the description of that design process and following that whole cycle. No matter how you term it, it's that whole cycle of the design process, including the testing, strategy, those types of things, and also the innovate. And as a coach, this is probably a really important aspect that a lot of coaches miss. You really should be studying with your teams the different criteria. We know that the Excellence Award, for example, this year is uh, heavily based on uh, the engineering notebook, being in the top of the skills, et cetera. And so, uh, and the Design Award and Innovate are really, really heavily weighted on the Engineering Notebook. And one of the changes to the Innovate Award this year is actually highlighting something that your team has done this year that is very innovative. And so highlighting those pages in your Engineering Notebook. And so 
if you go to the, the um, award appendix or this uh, uh, Innovate Award, it goes ahead and describes some of the things. And so teams identify in their notebook a specific section or pages. And so there's gotta be some way that ahead of the competition, your students have noted that. And that's something that's pretty important to do. And if, if they've forgotten to note that, make sure that your teams remember during the judge interview to also remember to speak about that. Katie, did you want to talk about some of the um, judging criteria, where they would find, what type of information to put in the engineering notebook? Yeah, so if you would go to notebooking.vex.com. You will receive a bunch of different resources that both new and experienced teams can use. Um, and it does go through some of the stuff that we were both um, talking about with your physical notebooks and digital notebooks. Towards the bottom of our screen, um, we do have some notebook basics, some notebook um, techniques, some notebook examples, uh, the notebook versus a team journal, and the engineering design process. So again, great resources for all teams to read through. Towards the end of our um, link here, we will come across an engineering notebook rubric. And this is actually the same rubric that the judges will be using during your judges' interview and during their deliberations. They will go through and they will score your notebook based off of this rubric. I know in, in our program, this is something that we have printed and it's taken to the teams on a regular basis. Are you remembering to communicate whoever's in charge of the engineering notebook? Are you making sure that you are working collaboratively to make sure all of the strategy changes, all of the options, pros and cons, why, why are we choosing this based on our strategy? All of that needs to be documented and it's a great exercise for the students to go through and show and be proud of the different things and the different problem solving critical thinking skills that they've developed uh, through the course of a season. So really it, going with your teams through every single one of those highlighted areas and helping them understand the expectations, there are no surprises. And so I th it, it's just so important. I think that's one of the things, just because coaches and teams, especially when you're new to the VRC competition, there is a lot of information, a ton of information. And just having this information pointed out to you, I think is gonna be really, really helpful and help you and your teams be successful. And it's also a great opportunity for each team to improve upon their notebook by looking through um, the engineering notebook rubric and if they really study that expert um, four to five points category, they can go ahead and they can build their notebook to reflect exactly what the judges will be looking for. And ultimately that just goes to make them a better team. Um, let's say further down the road, um, they have a problem with their coding or all of a sudden they lost that file of code. They're able to quickly reference um, that code again in their notebook. Great point. Also, um, whether they're doing the hard copy or they are doing the digitized, I know for the hard copy, it is absolutely okay for, you don't have to be the best artist in the world, it is absolutely acceptable to print pictures and paste those into the engineering notebook. I would definitely make sure that they are pasted in and even possibly taped around the edges and initialed. That's kind of the old school part of me coming, coming out, making sure that, that you're making it legit. And just keeping all of that information as pure as it possibly can, um, showing that it's not been modified later down the road or you've not cheated on it, et cetera. Uh, no scribbling out things, just one line through it with an initial, that kind of thing. Uh, old school stuff, but those are, you know, if, if you are working for a company applying for a patent, that's a really important aspect and that is something that could, could potentially help you or your company um, win a patent suit. Another link we would like to bring to your attention is notebooks.vex.com. If you forget that particular link, um, there is a link right on that notebooking.vex.com. That will bring you to um, the template that we're gonna go through. 
these templates were created and they're actually quite nice. I had not done a lot of them or looked at a lot of them, but uh, Katie, do you want to show us some of the main parts of them? Yeah, so with both uh, VexIQ and VRC, there are both um, Google Slide and Microsoft PowerPoint options. Um, so you can use whichever version will work best for your particular team. What's really cool about this resource is there's both a digital notebook template, digital notebook instructions, and digital V5 parts. So I'm just going to click on the template. This digital version also might be a great way if there's not just one person working on the engineering notebook, but a really great way for multiple team members to have that collaborative feel and have that input, uh, which again can happen with a hard copy. This is just accessible if anybody has, and maybe someone has the engineering notebook in their locker or someone else is working on it. This is a great way for teams to work at the same time entering information into the engineering notebook or if you have a team member who is unable to attend a competition or a practice, and they typically have that notebook, if you have a digital copy, um, everybody else on that team is still able to contribute from that particular meet or competition. Yeah, good point. So with this template, um, you are able to select um, the cover that you would like for your notebook. And if I just zoom in a little bit, I'm actually able to go in and edit all of these and to include my team number, team name, school, the start and end date of our engineering notebook, as well as if we would have more than one notebook. If we scroll further down, Ms. Paula, you wanted to add? Yeah, uh, can you take uh, and just keep certain pages? Yes, you can actually go in and let's say I do not need this resource page. I'm able to um, go in and delete this slide. What if I delete a slide and I decide later on I want to have that slide? Can I go back and get that added? Yeah, so the easiest way that you could do that is by going to that notebooks.vex.com and re-looking at that template, you're able to copy and paste a oh, okay. particular slide. Awesome. Um, what is also nice with this digital notebook is you are able to have the table of contents um, right built into your template. I think that's one of the things that sometimes teams forget about. To have a coach or witness signed an initial every single time that they make an entry, really important aspect of it. Uh, and then also when you are working on the index, making sure that you kind of highlight the design cycle. I know that there are teams that use different colors to highlight. Sometimes they use sticky notes or uh, little special things that they can add in a hard copy. And so I'm guessing it's, it's very similar in a digital copy too, where you can maybe link to those sections perhaps. I'm not super savvy when it comes to the digital notebook, but there are probably some of you out there that are even better at that. So Kind of a, a new new frontier that was added just, I believe, last year to VRC that and Vex IQ. Correct. Yeah, and also going back to Paula's statement about your student authors, um, right on the very bottom of that page, you're able to input the name of your project or the title of that particular page, as well as digitally sign um, whichever student or students were working on that page, along with the date stamp. One thing you'll notice is, um, judges, they will be looking for your notebook to be in chronological order. You don't want to go back and edit any page that you, let's say, worked on two months ago. Right. I know in a hard copy, that's easy, putting a line through the rest of the page, initialing it, saying a, the end of entry kind of thing. Uh, but that's, again, that date stamp is, is pretty important, especially when you're, th when you're thinking the purpose, industry standards and patent. So also in this template, you do have a few different um, page design options. So you do have one um, with just a simple grid, have another one with a lar little larger size grid, and then one that has just slightly smaller, and then smaller again. Another cool thing that I like with the digital notebooks is um, getting further into your programming skills. You can go in and input um, the 
ports of your brain, what motor is actually tied to that particular port? You can have that all documented right in your notebook. Same thing with your controller. If your main driver um, has a particular button that they would like to use to control, let's say, an arm, you can go in and you can um, denote that in your notebook. So we could quickly reference that later on. Another cool thing too, let's follow you'd like to add, okay, is you are also able to um, have the field in your notebook. What's really cool is you're able to move around some of these game elements. So as you were working on your programming skills, let's say you want to um, be able to program your robot to drive forward and move a tri ball to a different zone. You're able to denote that in your notebook. And again, hard copy, obviously it's, you can do the same type of thing, having that written down, but just kind of two methods for you to help your team get engaged in that engineering notebook and learn some of these processes that are in industry standards. Uh, let's see, so we've talked a little bit about the guide to judging. We've talked about digital versus digitized or hard copy uh, notebooks, rubrics. So one other thing that I wanted to point out with that notebooks.vex.com hmm. is the digital V5 parts that are listed right underneath that template. Oh, is that? The, if I can bring so it up. So you can import those images into the digital notebook, is Congrats. that what you're talking about? Yes. Cool. So your students, even if they are not great at sketching, Having something like that available certainly is helpful. Oh, I see. Very nice. Yeah, so you have all sorts of different parts that you are able to import to your engineering notebook um, through this digital V5 parts list. Very cool. Uh, very handy resource. Katie, is there anything else you can think of? Any questions from anybody as far as the engineering notebook goes? Well, I think that wraps up our, our uh, session at the Mall of America Coaches Camp. And uh, please, if you find out that you liked some of the information, you have other different coaching questions or coaching uh, ideas, coaching uh, things that you'd like to learn about, check out the World Unvex channel on YouTube. There's a lot of resources there. The REC Foundation has a great plethora of resources. And reach out to a, a veteran coach they are fantastic about sharing ideas and helping to steer you in the right direction thanks